So I'm Alex, I'm here with rockflesh.com and next to me is Carl from the band How Nile. Doing? How's it going? Doing fine sir, are you? Fantastic, yes. Yeah. So we're here at Rebellion in Manchester at night, number five of a massive 37 day tour I believe it was. How are, you, how are you feeling about it? Is it a daunting task or is it something that you're just ready to get into and just smash out ready? We're ready to smash it, yes. Amazing. So. I was just speaking to one of the guys from Creation as well. The one thing that amazed me about this tour is that it's 37 days and there's only four or five days of rest. Mm -hmm. How do you um, keep in the zone? How do you stop from kind of being like, oh, it's just another show? This, you know, what is it mm -hmm. that kind of gets you prepared to do such a long stint? Because sometimes it's seven or eight days at a time. Well, I, I try to think about, you know, it's it's not all about me or us it's really about the fans the fans make the show we're we do the same thing every day you know we play our songs we try to stay healthy um, but the sh the show is really about the fans they can make the show great or they can make the show suck um, as long as everything works yeah of course yeah you know uh, we're on Game on. So this tour is in support of, I don't want to call it your newest album because it's Me three either. years old. Yeah. Latest album I think would be the best way to call it. So Violin, uh, The Violin, last one. It, right? Yeah, the last one, yeah. The last one. So obviously there's been plenty of time for people to know the songs, take on the songs and see mm -hmm. what they're all about. Have you noticed that reaction when you've been performing them live? Has it been a, a, a I process? Have, of I've seeing? noticed uh, the fans, or at least the ones that are in front of us, uh, know all the words to the new songs too, so okay. Yes, I think that's cool. Perfect, and then hopefully as the tour goes on as well, you'll start to see the response as well. Um, one thing that really interested me about the album was when I was doing a bit of research about it, the writing process felt more like it was a brotherhood. It was mm. more of a collective team effort, and yeah. if you don't mind me saying, I feel like the outcome is probably in my opinion the most listenable Nile album it's it's mm -hmm. retains that energy that ferociousness yet somehow can hook anybody who might not be you know into this kind of scene into this kind so of you're world you're talking about accessibility exactly so mm -hmm. was that a conscious decision or was it just we're going to change how we do it and this is what happened as a result of it well i, I think we were all on the same page uh, I think albums turn out better when everybody is working together as opposed to working against each other. Uh, so in that respect, I think the sense of brotherhood and team spirit really did help the record. So, you know, you're all focused on the music instead of focused on fighting each other. You can achieve some results. So is that a process that will kind of lend itself to future albums? Obviously I've noticed a few months back you mentioned that you've turned songs into your next releases. That kind of process stayed the same or have you tweaked it a little bit at all or is it going to be the case going forward that it is a collective team effort? Well, I, I believe in team efforts. Uh, we've uh, obviously we've taken on some new members. So the dynamic, of course, you know, is is ever evolving. Uh, but I, for one, am a strong proponent of getting everybody yeah. on the same motherfucking page. And one of the things I love about this band is I'm a big history nerd. I'm trying to be a history teacher at the minute, so all of the Egyptology, all of the Middle East, and it's just something that really it, 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 it's, I resonate with it quite a bit, and I'm sure you probably get this quite a lot, but what made you decide to focus just on this amazing part of history to kind of collect and gather ideas for producing the band? Was it just a common interest, or was it a, a, a much deeper passion than that as well? Well, I think you asked and answered that question all, all by yourself. It's more, I was looking to get it more of like a... Are you trying to cut me out of the conversation? No, it's not, no. 
Is there anything deeper than that though? Is there, is there a story behind that? Is there uh, an anecdote that you think would best exemplify the reasons well, as to why? Okay, yeah, sure. Okay. Alright. So, after the day came, like the 1993 or so, we decided to call ourselves Nile. Um, there was an epiphany I had. I woke up one morning, I looked in the mirror, and I said, if I were a listener listening to a band called Nile, what would I expect to hear? So I went, okay. And the answer to that question is what the Nile songs became. I, I also figured if I'm going to do this, then I need to bone up. I need to do a little bit of research, you know? Uh, and that was a lot of fun. And that deepened my personal interest. The more that I read, the more that I uh, discovered, uh, the more interesting it became to me. I was reading as well that you went to Cairo as well to kind of gain a bit more insight. So I've been to Cairo myself quite a few times. What did you overall think of the city? Was it exactly what you was expecting? Or Because I find with Cairo and Egyptology especially, you get this look of the pyramids that you think, oh, it's going to look like it does in the pictures, but when you get there, it's not. It does so, not. so was you kind of shocked about that? Was it not what you was expecting? or? There's uh, no way, I think, that mere words can actually convey the sense of the ancient grandiosity, uh, the feeling of epic, overwhelming uh, feeling one gets when you stand next to the Great Pyramids or the Sphinx. Uh, Yeah, mere words. They just don't do it. You have to see it for yourself. You can watch it on a little screen all day long and you won't get that feeling. You have to be there. I, I, I find that very striking because I, so much of Nile's career, you know, I had experienced it through books or the TV screen or, you know, my laptop or whatever. But to be there in person, it's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's, like you say, it's quite an overwhelming. It's such a broad kind of, it's so, like, Cairo is just the, like, a drop in the ocean of the rest of the stuff that's available to see in Egypt. It's about, was, was there anything else outside of that that struck you where you thought this was, you know, this is what Egyptology Egypt is all about to me? Was there any other locations that you visited that kind of struck the same? Maybe even emotions at the pyramids, maybe of this. Uh, there was a place right next to Sankara we went to. And it translates into something like the Forbidden Pyramids. Um, and we wouldn't have been able to go there except Nader Sadek knew somebody. He knew the guards there. There's no one's allowed to go, but he knew the guards. So we were like, they had like AK-47s and everything. <laughs> right? And it's, uh, it's just three pyramids. Uh, completely ruined, and there's this temple in between them, also completely ruined, but it has a really, really unique vibe. Um, we spent a whole day there. Um, they yeah. the smaller collection, like they're not, they're not like massive pyramids, they're kind of like a, a conglomeration of like smaller type ones. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard about that place. So. I imagine it's definitely a surreal place to play. Also, you know, seeing uh, the extreme poverty in the outskirts of Cairo was very, uh, you know, moving. Uh, it, it's uh, what spawned the song, We Are Cursed. Because uh, in one view, I could see downtown Cairo, 15 miles away. Pyramids 10 miles that way, and all around me, garbage, refuse, poverty. I can see all three things, right? Yeah. Big modern city, sky rise, pyramids that are thousands of years old. 
and garbage. It's like, wow. Yeah, no. Especially if you look back and imagine what it would have looked like thousands of years ago, all the grandiose buildings, all the pillars and columns and the oasis, and then just kind of see what's happened. It's, yeah. it's definitely an eye opening, eye -opening experience. I agree. But no, thank you very much, it's been really insightful. I tricked you! <laughs> so I've been Alex, this has been Carl from Nile, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.